Hey guys, what's up everybody? I have been getting a lot of emails and, and messages from my students recently, you know, sending me links to their portfolios, to their ga galleries or recent projects, and basically, you know, asking for my opinion, trying to get some feedback, what they can improve, what would I do differently? I have been giving, you know, those feedbacks as much as I could. And like I said, recently it's getting more and more frequent. And this time I was looking looking at this beer photography project and I asked uh, Giannis if I can share this review with, with my community. I just realized that the amount of information I work with, I kind of take it for granted. And for some of the, you know, newer photographers or those who are trying to get into still life and, and, and product photography, this kind of information can be actually, you know, really helpful. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to take a look at uh, Gianni's new beer photography project, and I'm going to give my honest opinion about things that, that I see that could be improved. And again, if you are interested in me reviewing your work or give you some, give you my honest opinion about your work, send it to my email, publish it to my Facebook group, do whatever you have to, to get in touch with me and I'll, and I'll do my best to review your images. So let's take a look at this gallery and go through this quickly. So in general, this is what I usually receive. Some sort of, some sort of a gallery or some sort of a, some sort of a portfolio, some sort of a bunch of images that that I want to look at and get a feel of, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, not that I'm trying to look for errors, but I'm trying to get the overall feel of what it is and if there is anything kind of, you know, bothering me about certain things. I know from the previous conversation with Giannis that this was his first time he was doing beer photography project on commercial level and there, there was a lot that he had to learn up front. I think he overall he did a fantastic job. I can tell he was experimenting. He was kind of playing with it, seeing you know what's what and what it what it can do for him. I really like that he kind of experimented on white background, on black background. He was experimenting with the pour, you know, bringing some foam into the equation, some eyes, you know, trying to style it a little bit. And I I, I really I really think overall. I'm, I'm feeling good about this gallery. There was a couple of little minor details that I want to point out to you guys and that are important in general when it comes to bottle photography, liquid photography and things like that. Right from the bat, when I was looking at this bottle, I noticed that it's kind of losing a little bit of the detail in terms of edge and it's kind of blending together with the black background. And that's what usually happens when you when you're photographing a you know black sub or dark subject on a black or dark, uh, dark background. How this is uh, usually overcome or kind of this can be fixed with something called a rim light. Rim light is it's used in in portraiture. It's used in in even if you even if you Google rim light you're going to realize that they use that in a variety of different genres of photography. But when it comes to bottles, this is exactly what you can do. You can create a rim light on on the edge of your bottle. If I want to go and start looking for a rim light how-to, I'd like to find some diagram. They usually, there you go. You don't want to go from the side with your uh, with your light, especially when you have a bottle and you're working with some softbox or strip box you want to come slightly from behind you know the, the farther you get with your bottle the thinner the finer your rim light is going to be the more to the side you're going to come the more of that light you're going to see you know coming to the front of the bottle so he could have nicely create you know some rim lights on this on this bottle if he played with it a little bit more but even if like that i think it's it's okay but i would probably bring some rim light into these images Something very similar is happening with this bottle, and that's what what's happening is actually there is this light spillage. It's kind of, the light is coming over, and that's usually done when when you have some sort of a light source or a softbox or something, some sort of a, some sort of a, of a light from behind, and your product is simply too close to your light source. This is when you experience this artifact of 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 this fact, we can kind of see when the edges are kind of a little bit overblown. If he had moved his product farther away from the light, 
he could have easily overcome this problem and he would have come up with much, you know, sh sharper, crispier edge. On top of that, if, if he would have brought another light in and start creating some rim light, even, even if you have just one or two lights, you can create like one image and then, you know, create another image of a rim light and you can kind of comp it together in Photoshop. That can be done as well. But overall, I kind of like it. He's trying to light it equally from left and right. I can see that. I really liked how he how he worked with um, you know the droplets and how he was trying to bring that coldness you know of a beer to this image. I think he did a really good job. I mean, he was trying to experiment here with eyes. I can see that. I I, I went through them quickly, but the one that I like the most is this one. It, there is some sort of a three-dimensionality to it. It's kind of sitting nicely in the in the eyes. The eyes is surrounding it. It doesn't get in, in way of a of a label. If I was working in terms of styling with it before the shoot, I would I would have probably have brought more uh, eyes into that area. Or you can still copy some of that eyes and apply that in Photoshop, kind of cover that, and see if you can do you know. Nice job doing that. Another thing that I see, I kind of, I kind of really like how this side of the bottle is in darkness, and this one is actually lit. There is a lot of light to the label. It kind of draws your attention to the to the brand of the product. That's what clients like. But I kind of see that when when the light hits the bottle, you know, it goes through the translucent glass, and the the beer itself has some sort of a color. And you can see that color kind of spilling uh, onto the ice here. I would have probably opened that in Photoshop and tried to desaturate this area a little bit and see if, you know, I can work with it and how would that look like desaturated and see, you know, if there can be a, uh, any improvement to the image. But overall, I like the composition. I like, you know, the cold bit in the ice. It can't look any better than this. This is my take on, on this image. Rim light would probably improve that and moving away from your source light, you, you're going to overcome the spillage of the light around the edges of the bottle. And these are in general, you know, things that are very, these are small things that you can do and improve your images in a big way. This is my honest subjective opinion on this one. If you guys feel different about it, you are welcome to comment below. If you have some images or some, or some galleries that you that you want me to review and you, you and you are one of my students, I would be more than happy to look at them and go through them. You can email it to me or you can post it to my newly created Facebook group. You are going to see the link to that Facebook group and to my email on the end of this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.